this is something that you need for every book project that you start. In fact, it should be the first thing you do, but sometimes you do it just as you get it started. And your book's resume is basically your book's outline. You need it for pitching a publisher, you need it for pitching a bookseller, for a distributor, and even to pitch the media with. So in this um, slide, I show you the different elements that go into the outline. The last two elements, which are preliminary table of contents and the marketing plan, they are more specific to pitching a publisher and even a distributor. But the rest of it uh, is, is imperative if you're pitching even a good interview for your book and when you pitch uh, uh, the media to get them interested in your book or even uh, a bookstore, just about anything to do with your book, you need this. So the title of your book, the first element, is something that might be harder to write than the book. And a lot of times, you know, don't beat yourself up if you can't think of a really catchy title at the at the start, because sometimes the title comes even near the end of the book, but you could still put something on there like a sports book in progress or whatever. You could come up with something. Your description is your general overview of the book, and it's usually one one to four paragraphs that describe the book in detail. But your first sentence is short, succinct, and basically the one sentence that everybody's going to decide whether or not they take your book seriously or whether, whether you get the interview, whether you get the publisher, whether you get the bookseller. That first sentence is going to make or break whether or not anybody takes it. Then the next item on it is what's on the market. You need to know what is on the market that's similar to your book because your book is not probably not unique. And your book, uh, if you don't know what is on the market, the publisher, the bookseller, the media are all going to know what's on the market that's similar to your book. And they may decide that, well, why should we choose this book if it's the same as this book? So you need to, when you're writing your um, description, not necessarily referring to those books on the market, you list maybe the top four or five that come up on um, Amazon. And I like Amazon because... It also holds the self-published books in the most, you know, most of the self-published books are usually on Amazon. So you can find titles and, and book content that is similar to yours. Anyway, you need to know what's on the market and that way you can craft your description so that it stands out a little more unique than those other book titles. Your target audience, you need to know who they are and your target audience helps you shape your marketing plan. They, it helps you describe a lot of things. So uh, if, how do you know who you're going to sell your book to if you don't know who your target audience is? Because nobody is going to give a rat's behind about your book if they don't care about the topic. So you, you ain't going to sell me an accounting book because I hate math. So, but I would be interested in uh, political espionage and other kinds of books, you know, so you're going to need to know who your target audience is because there is no one size fit all. And then after that, this is what you do need for a publisher and probably for a distributor if they, if you want them to consider selling your book. So the preliminary table of contents, while you may not have all your chapters laid out in stone, you do need to have something there to kind of give them an idea of how the book is shaping out. So it's kind of like a, a treatment for a TV show. So you take chapter one and maybe have the one blurb about one sentence blurb about uh, what that chapter might entail 
and so on and so forth. Or you could just, if the chapter title is descriptive enough, you can just leave it as that. Your marketing plan. I don't care who you are, what kind of book you have, you need a marketing plan because nobody is going to take your book seriously without it. And especially a publisher, they will not even look at you if you don't have a marketing plan unless your name, you know, is a household word. So the marketing plan based to, goes back to your target audience again. Where are they? Who are they? How can you reach your target audience? So these are things you need to know. And I'm going to show you an example of an outline that I did for my one of my hockey books. So future prospects. So if I read you the first line, Future Prospects takes a behind the scenes look into the world of major junior hockey. Boom. That's it. That's what the book's about. You don't need to go any further. If you're interested in junior hockey or hockey or interesting stories, you might go further. I describe it a little bit more in detail. And this is in the first paragraph is where you really describe it in, in strong, succinct language. So the next sentence is focusing on the player's perspective. This book looks at some of the unique aspects of major junior hockey, such as leaving home at a young age, juggling and travel with school commitments, draft issues, and the important importance coaches have on their careers and lives. That's it. That's what the book's about. You don't need to read it, read the outline any further to know that. And then, but you still kind of move a little further to describe the book in a few more paragraphs. And I talk about junior hockey. I talk about what the players discuss and then how the reader feels after they read the book. So that's, that's my description. And then also what I did with my description is that I included some of the high profile interviews I worked on for the book. So I interviewed a lot of NHL players and Western Hockey League players. And so I listed some of the ones that I had already interviewed for the book or that I planned to interview for the book. These ones that are listed here, these are the ones I've already interviewed for the book. So that's part of the, uh, the description. Now, what's on the market? I have a couple of books on the market. There wasn't a, there were various team publications. Um, so I didn't want to list all of them. I just wanted to give an idea. So you may come across where there's a lot of books that are almost identical to each other. So you would just kind of do something similar to me, but the more descriptive and you need to, there is a certain format. If you don't know um, how to do a bibliography, there is a format on how you, um, include a book. So that's how you would do it is as you would do on a bi bibliography. Uh, then I go into my target audience, a general Canadian audience of all ages. Well, which is sort of true, but I actually dropped the ball on this because I should have said that they were actually hockey fans too. Cause well, of course, most of Canadians are hockey fans. So ah, there you go. Um, then the author's qualifications. So this is very, very old. I've done way more books than that since then. And, um, but you list, you can do it point form. You can do paragraph, however you want. And that would be that. And then I also included the uh, table contents here. So I listed all the chapters and, um, include some of the interviews who is in the interviews. So I didn't include the marketing plan on this part because that I only sent that. Well, I didn't actually send that to publishers. So I had my own marketing plan. Uh, this is a self published book. And um, once you've done your outline, then you um, and my once my book was published, and this is what I done for all of my own books, is I created a, a um, now, is it going to come up? Oh, oh, there it is. So I created an information sheet after the book was published. So this book, um, I used this when I was pitching to the media, when I was pitching to get book signings and all sorts of things. 
so I listed the uh, the book and the ISBN in the top part, and I did have it in bookstores throughout uh, Canada and North America. And uh, then take a tour inside the lifestyle of major junior hockey from the player's perspective. And this was the cover I had at the time. I have a different cover now because I've kind of updated it a little bit for the information, you know, contact information, etc. So this is basically the blurb of your outline, plus uh, a, a short, shorter version of your bio. And um, then you would have your publishing details. So your contact information is very important because you can't send out marketing material without contact information. Otherwise, how are they going to get a hold of you? So, so this is basically it for an information sheet and it's one page. So your outline would be one to two pages, but your, your information sheet, your sell sheet, as you like to call it in sales is only one page. And I've used the outline too uh, to sell when I didn't have the book published. And what I also did with the outline was the uh, when I interviewed some of the players, like if I set up an interview with a player and talked to them, then if I saw them later, the next time I talked to them, I had a package for them, um, gave them an outline so that they knew what I talked to them about and with a thank you card. And sometimes if I had done a book before in that genre, I might have given them a copy of it. It's just kind of PR, PR stuff so that uh, maybe they'll remember your name next time they see you. But you don't have to do that with every interview. But I would say that it would be nice to at least send a thank you card to everybody you interview for a book with a copy of your outline so that they know what they were talking to you about. So the more detailed you are, but the more uh, succinct your language is, and it's, it's, let's face it, it's copywriting. So you need to actually make it kind of your elevator speech. That first line in your outline is basically the only thing you need. And that is what everybody's going to make their decision on, on whether they read, <laughs> whether they purchase your book.